Okay, so before we can start, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what is Citrix and how it works and why we are using Citrix and what is virtualization? Uh, so it's basically um, a provisioning uh, tool, software. Mm -hmm. So we can, um, uh, we have access resource remotely, resources remotely for the mm -hmm. clients. And virtualization is basically um, sharing the re resources. Mm -hmm. So what is virtualization? So it's sharing of the resources, like if a dedicated resource, you can share it among, uh, it's not free all the time, you know, so you can share that resource. For example, if you buy a computer, so it's not dedicated to one person, one user, multiple users can access that and uh, you can utilize the usage of that computer. So basically, uh, with the help of virtualization, we can utilize any hardware up to its maximum efficiency, right? Yes. yes. Ideally, ideally, it should be 100%, but in practical world, nothing is 100%, right? We are having some uh, losses as well, right? So we will try to mm -hmm. achieve at least 90 to 95% of efficiency or utilization of the resources, whatever we have right so for an example like uh, <laughs> this is my physical laptop right and in my mm -hmm. physical laptop if i go to the performance tab you will see like uh, this is my cpu only 15 percent utilizing right now and my memory is a uh, 45 percent now right and my laptop is running right on windows 10 so what i'm doing here i'm just wasting my resources why because I'm unable to utilize the rest of the, you know, 55% of memory and 80% of CPU, right? So <laughs> with the help of virtualization, what we can do, we can install the hypervisor on a physical server or physical hardware. And with the help of that hypervisor, we can create multiple VMs or virtual machines on that hypervisor, right? So in that way, like with the uh, same resource, like on 16 GB of RAM, I will be able to create at least three or four machines on a same hardware. Is it clear? Yep. 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 Okay. So now coming back to the presentation. So basically, Citrix is uh, it is a company located in US Florida, and it is most popular for two product in virtualization, which is known as GenApp and Gen Desktop. So earlier those products were known as GenApp and Gen Desktop, but now after uh, the release of uh, uh, like version 7.xx uh, right uh, after that version release they guys renamed their product like from gen app to virtual app and from gen desktop to virtual desktop So now their product are known as Citrix virtual apps and desktop. Is it clear? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so now how Citrix works, right? This is a kind of a network diagram you can consider, right? In this diagram, I will let you know how Citrix works. So as you already working in Citrix infra, right? So just try to uh, explain whatever you are getting from that diagram. Just try to explain. Okay. So basically uh, on your left side where the Citrix receiver is, you use a mm -hmm. device with Citrix. So this is basically responsible for uh, provisioning or showing you the Citrix. So this is the end receiver in your mm -hmm. computer. Mm -hmm. Then it connects through the gateway and mm -hmm. then it goes to the storefront. Storefront is responsible for the provisioning of the apps, I think. And then delivery controller is basically the brain of the whole operation. Uh, studio and director is also for configuration tools. Licensing server is uh, acts as a connectivity like license. You need licenses to uh, provide services and apps. Server VDA, desktop VDA is uh, basically um, these are the two areas which I'm not I'm not very fluent. 
And Active Directory uh, is for authentication of the users and SQL Server is for the database. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now. Yeah. What is a storefront server? Storefront is basically, uh, no, it's responsible to give you the apps. No, no, I'm asking what is storefront server? No, I don't know, I don't know. It is a web page for end user, that's it. Okay. It, is a, it is a web page, no? like, you know, whenever you have to access your resources, you must have to uh, type some URL, www.xyz.com, right? Okay, so, okay. So, let me show you how to get exit of that, okay. So, let me show you. Uh, this is my storefront, right? Here, okay. this is my storefront server. So, for end user, it is a web page, right? I have to give that okay. URL to my users then user login so let me log in with test uh, user one let me enter the password once user login so look <laughs> once user login it will go to the active directory server to check the credentials right credentials now validated okay. now okay. you can see application and desktops are now published to the users right and user now click on mm -hmm. that desktop and the desktop will it will launch for that particular user right okay so let me explain this to you okay so on your left hand side it is a end user device on which we have to install one web browser and one application which is known as Citrix workspace app which is uh, which is responsible to create a secure connection between end user PC and to our Citrix infra servers, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is an end user desktop or laptop or whatever it is. It could be an Android device, uh, uh, like iPad, whatever it is, okay? User can connect mm -hmm. with any of the device. So this is the end user part. Now, <laughs> in between, we are having firewall. So for Citrix, uh, the firewall will be net scalar, but it's not always recommended to have net scalar. Means if you if you are having any different uh, firewall in your organization, you can configure that firewall as well, right? But for Citrix, they guys having their own firewall, which is known as Citrix ADC or Citrix net scalar. Okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this right hand part, this entire part, it is your data center, in which okay. all the resources are hosted, right? In, uh, in data center, you will have the storefront delivery controller, which is our mastermind or core component, right? Then SQL server mm -hmm. for database, then Active Directory for to manage uh, users and computers, right? Citrix Studio, basically it, it, is a, <coughs> it is a GUI console. With the help of Studio, you can manage the entire infra. What is director? Mm -hmm. Director, it is a tool for <coughs> IT guys. With the help of Citrix director, you can uh, trouble to the issues okay. related to the VDI or the virtual machines, right? And license yeah. server is something which is uh, responsible to allocate the licenses to the virtual machines, okay? And mm -hmm. this is your hypervisor on, uh, on which we have to host all the virtual machines or the okay. servers, okay? Right? So <laughs> Now, these are the core components I just explained to you, right? But how it works, right? So, mm -hmm. this is the end user. Now, we have allocated a, a new virtual machine to end user, right? So, what we have to ask to end user, like we, we will ask him, like, please uh, open web browser and <laughs> enter our storefront URL, right? So, storefront URL will be www whatever.com right so so once user enters uh, that particular url on the uh, on the web browser then it will load a web page right so mm -hmm. means the semi server let me log out so now i'm acting as an end user right so someone gave me that uh, url right and now <laughs> I just open this URL. So now this this is a web page which is opened for me, right? Now, <laughs> mm -hmm. now 
store front will prompt user to enter the credentials right why because the first mm -hmm. screen he is getting the same so now i am entering the credentials right <coughs> so once i click on login right it is a nanosecond task right so let me show you now i enter my credentials right <coughs> and when i clicked on login that query will go to the delivery controller, right? That's the user wants to log yes, in, right? So delivery controller is the mastermind, right? So what delivery controller yes, will do, it will forward that query to Active Directory server. Like boss, please check the credentials are valid or not. Why? Because Active Directory server is responsible to uh, validate the credentials, right? So once user click on log on, store front forward that query to delivery controller and delivery controller forward that query to the Active Directory server. So let me click on log on. So now I clicked on log on. Now Active Directory validated my credentials and I'm getting this screen, right? So now what if, now let me try to enter some wrong credentials. Okay, some random password. In that case, what will happen? Query will forward it to delivery controller. Delivery controller forward same query to Active Directory server and Active Directory server will tell like users are entering the wrong credentials or users is not valid. That particular user is not valid, right? In that case, if mm -hmm. Active Directory deny the, uh, deny the connection, user will get some error like incorrect username and password, right? Mm -hmm. So what is happening here? Storefront, storefront, it is just a web page, right? and it is forwarding okay. the query to delivery controller and delivery controller knows who is the correct person to validate the credentials. So in our case, Active Directory server is the correct person who can validate the credentials, right? So now my credentials are validated. Let me enter the correct credentials. So now credentials are validated. So <laughs> what will happen here? Now my credentials are validated. Now, what will happen? Active Directory again forward the request to delivery controller and delivery controller knows now credentials are validated. Now we have to check in database what is the applications or desktop allocated or published to that particular user. So what delivery controller will do? Delivery controller forward that query to database server, SQL server. And it will ask, please check in your database which application or which desktop is allocated or published to that, <laughs> to, sorry to that particular user, right? So mm -hmm. once it will done, now you can see delivery controller active directory server validated and it will check with the database. Now, if I click on the application, as per the database, those icons are published to me. If I click on the desktop, as per the database, two desktops are published to me, right? So if I change the user, again, let me log on, test 02. So as per the database, uh, the application should be different or desktop should be different for test to user, right? Let me log on. You can see applications are same, but this user having only single desktop, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these logs are stored into the database server, which is SQL server. Is it clear? Yep, yep, okay. makes sense. <laughs> Now, let me use the highlighter where it is, okay. So now, SQL server validated, like this applications are published to user. Again, it will forward query to delivery controller and delivery controller will forward that query again to the hypervisor, like it will tell boss, please power on those virtual machines or the icons user wants to access. So uh, uh, all those virtual machines, it will get powered on in the hypervisor. And when user click log on, uh, click on log on tab, he will get the icons, whatever is available for that particular user, right? So now what will happen? <coughs> now user is getting these icons are published, right? So let me log off again and let's go with the test 01. Okay. So now I'm getting as I end user two desktop, right? So now user will get those tiles, right? So once user click on the tiles, it will download one ICA file and it will open that file with the Citrix workspace application. 
So let me launch this. Mm -hmm. You can see now I got my desktop connected. Is it clear? Yep, yep. How it is working? Yes. Okay. There's only one point once you finish. So only one thing here. So mm -hmm. the database server, it, it only has the information that uh, it's got the information reference where to go yeah it doesn't have the actual apps apps are in the video server. apps are in hypervisor on video server right this yeah. is just yeah. uh yeah. it is just keeping the reference record, right yes record keeping yeah yeah <clears throat> so now it will launch the desktop for me in some time so this is actually this lab is already set up but uh, uh, i'm just explaining you with the practicals right so now <laughs> once our machine yeah, yeah. Uh, it will power on now uh, it will check for the license server it will register the machine into the delivery controller right and what is studio so basically studio like the launching process like uh, when user launching the application there is nothing to do with the studio nothing to do with director only license server will be included basically studio is a tool with the help of Citrix Studio, you will be able to uh, manage the machine catalog, manage the delivery group, manage the users, right? Those kind of operations you can perform with the Studio yeah. and Director, it is a tool, right? So, for an example, yes. like, uh, let me, this is my Director URL. Mm, okay, right? So, let me log into my Director. So basically how director works, like <laughs> this is my director. In my director, if I go to the dashboard, I will see the information like user connection failures or whatever is going on, what kind of delivery groups I have, right? All those informations are there. And if I click on the search, now let me try to search user test zero one. So if I click on that user, I will be able to see user is now connected with one machine with Windows 10. Why? Because here he is connected to this machine, right? So mm -hmm. once I click on this, <laughs> so I will get uh, the list of applications, whatever applications is open for this user. But right now there is no application open, right? So let me open some applications here. I can uh, open the Microsoft Edge. I can open the spreadsheet. Okay, so now I open two applications. So now you will see one application is open, which is Microsoft Edge and Spreadsheet is launching, right? So it will list it there soon, right? So if I refresh this, you can see. Yep. So now uh, if a user call me and uh, a user is telling me like, you know, my application, it got stuck, right? User is not able to, uh, <laughs> close or uh, perform any operations, right? So in that case, what we can do, we can uh, click on this uh, uh, particular application and we can end the application from here, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is how it looks like. Uh, well, one thing, please. Uh, if you go to the details uh, and then you go, uh, there's something which uh, I don't know if, if this it is configured or not. If you go to the details, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going uh, uh, of, uh, Yeah, just give me a minute. My server got stuck. Okay. Okay. Okay, no worries. okay. Now, if I click on the details, you will get. Yeah, and if you, the if you machine come name. down, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And down, down more where there's roaming profile thing is there. Yeah, come down. Yeah, here, sorry. So here I see on the left, if you go up, please. Mm, personalization yeah, you see, yes yes so <clears throat> excuse me in my environment i see sometimes the bar is red and, mm -hmm. and the disk space is running low so okay. what is this can you please explain that to me so <clears throat> basically uh, do, uh like uh, in your uh, in your infra right so like uh, applications or desktops uh, are getting published uh, with the PBS infra only, like provisioning services right so i'm um, this yeah. is why we are not getting these options here the reason is that 
because this particular machine it is hosted on MCS in fact so far. I'm just uh, demonstrating you demonstrating you how things work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that we will configure in upcoming sessions. And, and then you will be able to reset user profile from here. You can reset the virtual disk. You will get the details. Everything will be there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now. Nice, nice one more thing here. What is the roaming profile and your local profiles here? Sorry? Roaming what is profile and local profile and roaming profile. Okay, so look, roaming profile is nothing when you are using the folder redirection and you are keeping users data on any shared folder, it is known as the roaming profile, right? But if you are using any persistent VDI or persistent machine, in that case, what you will do, you will host all the user data on the uh, local drive only, right? So okay. look, <laughs> in my case, like, uh, as I told you earlier, like in my case, what I'm doing here, <coughs> I have created uh, one uh, share here, where it is, okay, share folder here. In that share folder, I have created one user profile folder. So whatever the users are doing, for me, users data are stored here only, in this share folder, right? But for users, the data, it is on your desk, on their desktop, like, uh, let me show you. Okay, so as you can see, this is my test user one, right? For test user one, this is a desktop and he's having some files and folders, right? But actually these files are folders are not on this machine. These folders are on my local drive, means my shared drive, right? So for user, it is a roaming profile. Okay. So is it a temporary profile? It's a permanent one. It's a permanent one, non temporary one. Means uh, if I uh, let me show you, like uh, if I create any new folder here, I can give any name, right? So that folder for this user, this folder is stored on his desktop, right? But basically, mm -hmm. the data is present on this path in this local server, right? Not on the VDA. So what is happening here? Why I did, uh, why I do that? The reason behind is that means. If this particular user, this user can log into any of the virtual machine with the domain credentials, right? But on the every virtual machine, he will get the same desktop. Means on any machine which is connected in my domain, user will get same desktop. He can log into any desktop in the office premises. So that is the reason behind this means. <coughs> Let me try to show you if you can see. This is your user desktop. For user, it is a desktop, right? But if I right click on the desktop, if I go to the property, <laughs> and if I go to the location, you can see I change the user desktop location to this DC server, right? But if I open CMD here, and if I type host name, you will see uh, what is that? Okay, host name. So you will see the host name of this virtual machine is Windows 10 01, right? But user's desktop is hosted on uh, some other machine, right? For backup purpose, because you know, now things are easier for me. Why? Because if I have to take a backup of thousand users, what I have to do, I have to copy single folder only this folder, right? I do not have to uh, go to a desktop of every user and then I do not want to manually copy the user data, right? So this is a thing. Means now if someone told me means whatever the plans I'm having like daily backup, weekly backup, or any other user data backup, what I have to do, I simply copy that folder and I can paste this folder to any location. Can it out? Okay, okay, okay. So this is user profile, no? Yeah. I just given the name user profile and in this user profile, I'm having multiple users, right? Okay, okay so let me show you how it works. Like uh, this is my server manager. Go to the Active Directory users and computers and test users. Now you can see like uh, only three users are there, right? I have not created uh, any four user, right? So now what I can do, let me create one more user here like uh, test uh, then 
user 04 let me name it test 04 next password will be this i'm entering some random password for this user and click on next then finish it so now <laughs> test user 4 is created right but when you see here right one folder is automatically created when i created the new user so when you are creating the, the domain user then automatically it will create a one folder yeah but why it is creating the folder because i have configured one group policy right without okay. group policy it will never create means now what i can do i can let me create one more user like uh, test user 05 let me name it uh, test 05 next enter some password next <laughs> so test 5 is created when i go back here you will see one folder is automatically created but but if you click on test 1 you will get desktop document download right but for this user there is no desktop no download right why because the user didn't logged into any machine so far right so okay. let's try what we can try let me go to the storefront now here let me try to log in with the test 4 test 04 let me enter the password for test 04 so now it is creating the user profile for first time as you can see it is applying the folder redirection policy now it will create the desktop for first time for this user and in some time you will see desktop and other folders will be created here soon okay once oh no, okay here in test 4 you can see it is automatically created got it yep yes, yes. so these are the group policies actually so i will guide you how to create the group policies means if these are very very simple actually not that much complicated okay okay <laughs> so this picture is clear mohammed uh, your, yes, your, your yes. name is mark mac mac right mac yeah yeah okay so now okay i'm having only uh, like uh, three minutes remaining in this session so what i am doing i'm terminating this call and i'm sharing new invite to you okay within a uh, two minutes okay okay otherwise this call it will automatically got disconnected i do not want that okay okay no worries yeah because another reason is that i'm using free version of zoom so we are only having limitation of 45 minutes only and the reason behind is that because you know for youtube perspective i always used to prefer uh, recordings up to 45 minutes only if i record a session for one hour two hour and four hour now no one will see the videos right yeah. it will be boring yeah. actually okay so i'm just sharing a new invite to you guys in couple of minutes okay okay no worries Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.